When you're heavily interested in a certain hobby, it can be incredibly fun to go to festivals and events that revolve around that topic. In birding, there are many different festivals to attend, but it can be hard to tell what going to one of these events is actually like. In 2023, my friend Nathaniel and I got invited to guide and film at the 30th annual Rio Grande Valley Birding Festival in South Texas. The five-day festival occurs yearly in the fall in Harlingen, Texas, and involves field trips, seminars, a trade show, raptor show, and more. We arrived in Harlingen a few days early in order to do some birding on our own before the festival kickoff party the following day. After about 10 hours of travel, we finally made it to Harlingen. We first went to Orlando, where we got a house sparrow inside the airport. It seems like a good airport for that. And there was a bald eagle flying around. Then we flew to Houston, stayed on that same plane, and then to Harlingen. So like 10 hours of travel time. So we're really excited to be here, excited to partake in the festivities. Checklist man, how are we feeling? Feeling good. Tired, but... It's your first time in Texas. It is. That's got to feel good. It does feel good. I like to get across the U.S., you know. Before the party, we were able to see some awesome rarities, including a golden crown warbler, distant American flamingos, and a roadside hawk. We had an awesome day of birding. Now we're going to go to kind of like the festival kickoff from 6 to 8, and then there's a guides meeting. So hopefully we'll get to meet a bunch of people and talk about some of the birds we saw today and what we're doing the rest of the week. The party was a great opportunity to meet other birders and included a word from the Harlingen city manager who even recalled getting a life bird at the festival. A few years ago, we had an Amazon kingfisher that was located here in Harlingen, the only second time that it's been spotted in the United States. And it was here, and I actually got to see it, so that was very satisfying. And I'm not a birder, so I was really excited. <laughs> so I hope that you find another bird that's rare here in, in, in the valley. After the kickoff party and guide meeting, we headed back to our hotel to prepare for our first day of guiding the following morning. Just had our meeting for the guides and we went over kind of all the rules, the expectations. A lot of cool people excited to get to know them more over the course of the festival. We also got some cool festival hats and festival shirts as well. The next day, we set out on our first tour, co-led with seasoned birders Cameron Cox and Allison Anholt. First day officially guiding here at the festival. It looks like we got a great group to work with on South Padre. We have Cameron and his wife who are both pros here. Uh, so we've already seen some cool stuff. There's been a peregrine falcon. Um, excited to get to know everybody here at the festival and see some more cool birds. Our first stop was the forest and beach on South Padre Island, where we picked out a wide variety of shorebirds, including piping plovers. We also spotted some beautiful roseate spoonbills before heading to the South Padre Island Birding Center. There's a lot of cool stuff here. It's been a super whirlwind. We had a ton of good birds at the mud flat, and now we're seeing stuff a little closer, which is great for tours. And uh, some new species as well. We had an American oyster catcher, a non-white morph reddish egret, and hopefully we'll see even some more cool stuff. Along the boardwalk, species gave us incredibly close views, and we even got glimpses of a mangrove warbler which is a subspecies of yellow warbler, in which males have a maroon-colored head. After making a few more stops, we headed back to the convention center, pleased with the variety of birds we were able to see in the South Texas heat. So right now we're at the convention center, and this is where everyone kind of congregates before the field trip, so they have some stuff set up. Tomorrow there's going to be more like booths and tables for people to check out, but right now there's some presentations going on, there's places where you can take photos. And uh, we just got done with our trip today. It was really good, but it was really exhausting trying to get everyone on every bird. But it was a lot of fun. We made a lot of cool connections. And I'm excited for our future trips. So we're going to go out and uh, see what else we want to look for today before doing some other stuff later. Nathaniel and I did some birding on our own, which included seeing the famous burrowing owl and then finding our lifer green parakeets, which have established themselves in Harlingen. We got our green parakeets. After enjoying our parakeet views, we stopped by Sin T. Lee's presentation on flycatcher ID at the convention center. Flycatchers are a group of birds that can be extremely difficult to tell apart, depending on the species. Just got done with the presentation from Sin T. Lee. Got him to sign the flycatcher book. So that was really neat, and hopefully we can have him on the program sometime. Now we're going to head to the Birds and Beers event, hang out there for a little bit, and finally get some sleep before we are guiding tomorrow again. 
The next morning, we were up bright and early for our trip to Stephen Thompson Wildlife Drive at Laguna Atascosa, a section of road that is normally closed to vehicles. This day would start a stretch of unfortunately rainy days in the valley. Although the wet weather was needed for the area, it did put a slight damper on the festivities, although guides and participants kept their spirits up. We co-led the trip with guides Kelsey Biles and Michael Redder, and started off by getting everyone on one of the American flamingos that had been hanging out on the property. In addition, there were a wide variety of waterfowl, shorebirds, herons, and terns. From there, we cruised the roads in the vans, spotting other interesting species, and a unique mammal called a nilgai. These introduced animals are very large and can be found throughout the property. One of the highlights of this trip was a flyover bird that only two of our participants saw, an out-of-range white-throated swift. Thankfully, one of them got a photo of the bird before it quickly flew out of view. After our tour for the day, we checked out the expo, which has booths for different organizations and bird clubs, as well as optics companies, groups with live birds, and more. This area is definitely one of the hubs of activity at the festival and is great for networking, testing new gear, and planning new birding trips to different areas, including Uganda. Okay, my name is Kalema Livingstone. I come from Uganda and I've come to attend this festival. It's been good, but interrupted by the rain. But hopefully next year we'll get a better season. And uh, the turn up was the turn up was good and uh, we expect to come next year. I uh, would like to tell the American people about the safaris in Uganda, about the bird watching, and the interesting game to see, including the gorillas and the tree climbing lands. So thank you to the organizers, and we'll be back again. We just got done hanging out at Expo, and that was really neat. I just love the energy of the festival. Like, there's so many people to talk to, and there's so much going on. But it was nice to see all the vendors, people selling optics, talking about optics, doing tours, uh, selling their artwork, everything like that. So it was a really good vibe in there. And we are waiting to do our parrot field trip in a little bit. So we've just been kind of checking out the other stuff, and uh, hopefully we get some good parrots. After taking in part of a live show, Nathaniel and I got ready for our parrot palooza trip where multiple guides take participants to look for wild parrots around Harlingen. Our first stop was to relocate the green parakeet colony, which didn't take long. We have just a massive flock of green parakeets for the tour. Really glad they were able to come out and see them. Everyone's been getting great views. It will be a little bit before the red crown come out, so we're probably gonna enjoy these for a while before then moving on. After enjoying views of the green parakeets, we went to locate a red crown parrot colony. These birds come into roost right around sundown, and after a little bit of searching, we were able to see a nice group, which also included red lord and yellow-headed parrots, which were likely escaped or released pets. All right, everybody say yay, parrots! Yay, yay parrots! parrots! The next day, Nathaniel and I had a trip to look for Aplomato falcons on Old Port Isabel Road. The road is mostly dirt and is not the best kept, so we tried to get out to search it before the impending rain. We're here on the Aplomato Alley tour with Willie and Jesse, and we are checking all these posts for Aplomato Falcons. Nothing yet, but we're gonna cruise kind of the whole road. We're hoping the weather holds out and doesn't get too bad, because if it gets too rainy, we're not gonna be able to kind of finish out uh, our trip here. We'll have to head elsewhere. So hoping that holds out. Um, we've seen some sparrows, some interesting South Texas specialty species like white-tailed hawk, but no falcons yet. Along the road, two of the most obliging birds were a tropical kingbird and a northern rough-wing swallow. We did end up seeing an aplomato falcon along the road, but our best views ended up being at a nesting platform as the rain began and intensified. We got falcons! Yeah! Uh, yay! Success! Do you guys think that's the coolest falcon species? <laughs> oh, I Yeah? Yeah. We made a quick stop at Laguna Atascosa spotting a peregrine falcon along the way, as well as a cool reptile in the rain before heading back to the convention center. There, I got to catch up with Justin LeClaire, the field trip coordinator at the festival, to hear more about what makes the Rio Grande experience so special. Hey guys, this is Justin LeClaire. I'm the field trip coordinator here at the Rio Grande Valley Birding Festival. Um, it's one of the biggest festivals in the country. People come in from all over, um, both from the US, Canada, Mexico, um, sometimes out of uh, this hemisphere as well. 
Um, you can come down here and see about 30 of our kind of more local species that you can't see anywhere else in the U.S. We have guides that we ship in from all of the country, again, and out of country. Get a whole bunch of people that are able to really give a really good diverse background. And so in addition to all of, all of the, the folks and the participants that come, um, you know, we've got 150 field trips this year, I think. Uh, we are going to 40 or 50 different different locations, and we have a couple different trip types at those. We've got some night trips, got some afternoon trips, got parrot trips, kind of something for everybody in the form of trips. Uh, and then inside the convention center as well, we have a giant uh, vendor room, 60 plus vendors in there at, in the trade show. Uh, we have a silent auction, and we have a lot of free family fun as well. So we've got um, some uh, children's uh, writing, art, and photography contests. Um, we have a, a raptor show, so every few times a day uh, you can go outside and see some hawks fly perch to perch and uh, they have a raven that will take donations from you and pop it in a box. It's really fun. Um, and uh, yeah, so there's, there's kind of really something for the whole family and um, we're just trying to improve year after year and uh, we're looking forward to hopefully seeing you down here as well. After chatting with Justin, I went out in the rain to bird on my own without much luck. And the next day, I led a big day van trip with my friend Isidro. Multiple big day vans went out in a certain time window to try and find as many species as possible. With the rain still a major factor for trip planning, we talked with our group and decided to make our focus staying dry. After adding a couple birds to our list, we made our way to Estero Llano Grande, a legendary birding location in Texas. Here we braved the rain and mud to bulk up our total, which included species such as the common parake, a master of disguise. That's amazing. This is totally trusting his camouflage, right? Like, Did you yeah. there are two here? Yes, the other one is further up this oh. way. I also caught up with a few visitors to the festival from across the pond, who I had seen throughout the week, and asked them about how they were enjoying the festival experience. Oh, it's been really good fun. I've seen loads of stuff That's that we've not seen before. Uh, I think it's been a real variety of places to go and a variety of points. So oh, it's probably a proper word for this, but ecosystems behind, is what I would use. Right in the middle and, of that, yeah, it's go just down been into really good. I've not minded getting up a horrible cock every day. <laughs> yeah, and the weather's been pretty great, apart from today we're experiencing some British weather. <laughs> We'll try to keep that out of the festival next year. Yeah, that'll be great. If we can yeah, schedule that, that'll be good. After chatting with our friends, our group continued exploring Estero and found a rare bird in a mixed flock that was actually a lifer for me, a Townsend's warbler. After the excitement of our rare find, we headed back to the van to check out our total. Our species count is roughly about 68 different species right now. Considering the weather, and we've really only been to one park, it's actually really good. 68. What do you guys think? 68 so far? 68 about? so far. We headed to our next stop for the day, Edinburgh Scenic Wetlands, where we were able to locate another rare species, an eared grebe. All right, we've officially got our second post in the rare bird chat. Yeah. Rare <laughs> grebe, let's go. And we've been having a great time here. We just had an eared grebe out at Edinburgh City Wetlands, as well as a green kingfisher. So our people are pretty pumped about that. I'm pretty pumped about that myself. Uh, getting a pretty nice total. Uh, like I said, we're kind of taking things a little more chill. We've still been able to find two rare birds, and hopefully we can find some more before the day is done. The wetlands were also great for least grebe views as well as neotropic cormorants. On our way out, we all saw a rose-breasted grosbeak. We left the wetlands and picked up the famous burrowing owl and ended up seeing a merlin on a power line to give us our hundredth species for the day. After spotting a few more birds, we hit our time limit and ended our day with 106 species. All right, it's 4.30, so we're officially maxed out 106 species. Congratulations. Good job all around. Well done. Awesome, 106, solid number, great day of birding. Overall, we had a successful trip, seeing multiple rare birds and local species, staying mostly dry. Every big day van tallied over 100 species, showing just how much diversity exists in the valley. After returning, I decided to take one more lap around the expo. After making the rounds, I got to talk with one of the volunteers of the festival. The time and effort they put into this event is critical, and they're a huge part of its success each year. The role of volunteers in this birding festival is 
essential to its existence. There are probably mm, slightly over 100 uh, volunteers, many of whom are from the uh, Texas Master Naturalist, which is a program that is oriented towards conservation and is ongoing. The Texas Master Naturalists have to do projects, they have to put in hours uh, for the benefit of conservation, and this is one of the things they may do. Other people, like myself, <laughs> just because we want to strike a blow for wildlife in one way or another. Um, a lot of jobs. If anybody who's seeing this wants to volunteer, our door is open. Uh, we have a great bunch of people. It's a great week. We have great volunteers. We have great guides. And we have a lot of great visitors. Uh, it's a lot of fun. You won't regret it. The next day, I had an early trip to a now legendary location in South Texas, Santa Margarita Ranch. The ranch is private land that has limited access to birders, but allowed festival groups to come visit. This area is right next to the Rio Grande River, which helps separate the United States from Mexico, and up until the festival, Santa Margarita Ranch was known for having a reliable population of brown jays, rare visitors from the south. We're almost there, we're just taking a bathroom stop, and then we'll make our way into Santa Margarita. I really hope the rain doesn't affect the species too bad, because it's supposed to be like a legendary place. The brown jays have been pretty consistent. They didn't show up for one of the tours this time, but like before that, they showed up almost every time. So hoping those show up. Things like Morlet seed eater, red-billed pigeon, Muscovy duck, wild Muscovy duck, we have a chance for. So I really hope that the rain didn't, isn't gonna hold the birds down too much. We entered the ranch and parked next to a section of the border wall. Zach, one of the guides who knows the ranch incredibly well, gave us the rundown of how the trip would go. We'll be on the bluffs for as long as essentially we desire with a maximum of two and a half hours, but if you want to go less, that's fine. Then we're going to come back to the vans. We're going to drive down past the ranch house. The ranch owner is going to open up some gates for us and park, and we're going to hike about a quarter mile or so to the area where the jays hang out, which is not the bluffs. They haven't seen on the bluffs and they've been heard on the bluffs. So always have your eyes and ears open, but they they hang out in the riparian zone by the river um, down at the other end of the range. At the bluffs, we saw a distant ringed kingfisher, green kingfisher, and gray hawk. After seeing some birds in this location, about half of us moved further down on the bluffs to search some grasses for Morlet seed eater, another rare bird known to be found at the ranch. We did have at least one seed eater that popped out in the open for a second, but only a few participants got eyes on it. While trying to refine the seed eater, a large bird flew by in the middle of the river. It took a couple seconds before Brian, one of the guides, called out, that's a bare-throated tiger heron, which was the third time one has ever been seen in the United States. Jamie Harmon, one of the trip participants, got some excellent photos, and we gathered around to admire the find still in shock about what we had just seen and how rare it was. That's pretty sweet. That would be ABA third, and they are, they are regularly found 20 miles that way. Um, let's go, team. <laughs> yeah, it's not a life for me. It's a good ABA bird. Yeah, yeah. Third goose record, bear-throated tiger, and that's insane. Wicked. Insane. With limited time, we headed back to the van to dry off and celebrate our rare sighting. Guys, how are we feeling back there? <laughs> Bear-throated tiger heron, let's go! We then parked further down and walked through the wet and muddy road to the location where the brown jays were normally seen. We stopped to look at a mixed flock and actually got another view of the bare-throated tiger heron as it vocalized next to us and then perched in a tree, obscured by branches. That was cool. Oh my gosh. Very gorilla-like. <laughs> See that really contrasting cap and that, yeah. that yellow face with him right there. I just, I think they're so beautiful. Just a very fine garden on the back. It is amazing. <laughs> Good rainy day to be out. We moved down to the brown jay spot and Zach put out some fruit. While we waited for them to come in, a couple rose-throated bacards called, and one perched up nicely. Audubon's orioles could also be heard vocalizing in the distance. Unfortunately, the brown jays never did show up, but it was impossible to be disappointed with our bare-throated tiger heron find. After moving a Mexican free-tailed bat off the border wall and a long drive back to the convention center, we concluded our trip, the last one I was leading for the festival. Just got back from our trip. 
It was unfortunate we didn't have the brown jays, but I mean the bare-throated tiger heron, that's an incredible bird. Everyone, including myself, is super stoked about that one. And I think we did pretty well for how rainy it was, but you definitely have this kind of like festival wind down where like people are packing up. There's like a lot less energy. I, I don't like the end of festivals. I definitely like the start with all the anticipation. But this has definitely been a great one. If you've never been here, I would highly recommend coming. It's great for beginner birders or more advanced birders. Really a little bit of something for everyone. Would definitely recommend it if you've never been here before. Before leaving the convention center, I got to talk with Eric Brunke, one of the other festival guides, to get his final thoughts about what it's like to lead trips at this event. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Eric Brunke. I live in Duluth, Minnesota, and I'm a birding tour guide for Victor Emanuel Nature Tours. Uh, here at the Rio Grande Valley Birding Festival, having tons of fun with so many birds day by day, also having a blast connecting with so many people. Every single day has been absolutely just, just brimming with chachalacas, green jays, kiskadees, uh, lots of Altamira Orioles too and there's even a lot of late fall migration happening. Uh, we're having a great time despite rainy conditions over the past few days. And uh, this morning we even got to see a bunch of ducks coming in with the heavy rainfall filling up ponds by the hours. So we've had a lot of fun. Um, day by day it's been absolutely magical connecting with people and sharing the world of birds together. All in all, being part of the Rio Grande Valley Birding Festival was an incredible experience, and in 2023, 269 different species of birds were seen, including six that were seen for the first time in the festival's history. If you'd like to attend the festival this year, you can sign up for their email list at rgvbf.org to receive notifications, and registration normally happens in late summer. Have you ever been to a birding festival? Let us know in the comments below. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding.